Aloha everyone and welcome to the Sanity.io Crash Course. My name is Cap and in this video I will be walking you through how to get started with Sanity. So Sanity is a platform where you can store all of your data for your apps and websites. A really cool thing about Sanity is the Sanity Studio. It's a dashboard where you can edit, update, collaborate, pretty much manage all of your content. And it's open source and built with React, so it's fully customizable for your projects. So let's set up Sanity, let's deploy that Sanity Studio, and I'll even show you how to query for that data to show up on any front-end framework. Pretty cool, right? So you can find me on Twitter at Kapehe underscore OK, or I do have my own YouTube channel slash Kapehe. Now, if you do have further questions after this video, there is a developer community that you can find at slack.sanity.io. So let's get started. All right, so to get started with Sanity, let's install the Sanity CLI. We're gonna to head to sanity.io and we're gonna click on get started. Once we click on that, we will see this command right here for npm install. But this does take us to the create page of the sanity.io website. Down below, we do have some official starters that will have like a schema and a front end pre-built together. So that's like a really quick way to get started. But for today's crash course, I'm going to show you the CLI way. So this command will npm install globally the Sanity CLI and Sanity init is initializing a brand new Sanity project. So I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna grab my terminal and here I'm going to paste in that command. So right away, it's going to install the CLI and then ask me to log in. So you can log in with Google, GitHub, or an email password combination. I'm going to use GitHub. So navigate down to GitHub, press enter, and it's going to redirect me to a tab that is initializing me through GitHub. And because I am logged in on GitHub in my browser, the login is successful. So I'm gonna close that tab. I'm gonna go back to my terminal. And here we are now at the sanity init part of the command we did. So create new project. We're gonna hit enter because yeah, we want to. Your project name, let's name this blog. You can name it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna do blog, hit enter. Now, when you have a sanity project, you can have multiple data sets. For this, the default data set is production. We're going to stick with that, but just know you can have multiple ones. So I'm gonna hit Y for yes, hit enter, creating the data set. And the next thing is it's going to give us a path on where our project lives. Let's make sure that that looks correct. So now we have the path and that is the correct path with the name blog. I'm going to hit enter to confirm it. Now here we have project templates. If you want to start with a clean project and this is what will show up, the schema is what shows up in the Sanity Studio and within our code and I'll show you all that in a second. But we do have a couple that we can choose from, movie project, e-commerce, blog, and this will have like sample data in the movie or e-commerce or blog it will have just the schema for us and schema for us and then we will add in our own data so i'm going to do blog so i'm going to hit enter and as it builds it out we are going to pretty soon have our own sanity studio so using sanity init we went through those questions and it's building out our sanity backend for us so the sanity studio built in react open source is fully customizable, like I said. So I'm gonna show you how we can customize our schemas and update and edit things. And it looks like it's done. So now what is what it says? Let's actually CD into our project. So we're gonna do CD blog, cause that's what we named it. Hit enter. And I'm going to be using VS code to be dealing with my code. So the shortcut to open that is code space period. Um, however you need to open up your project, feel free. So here I have my project and we have blog. Now let's walk through this code just a little bit. So we have our node modules, we have plugins. We're not going to add any plugins today, but know that that's where they would live if you did. Schemas is where all of our schemas for our Sanity Studio are going to live. So we have author and rather than talking about this, let me just show you. So now that it's up and running, before I show you the Sanity Studio, I wanna show you one little tip. So if we go to sanity.json, let me collapse that, sanity.json, we have our project ID. So our project ID is the ID that our front end will need when we are trying to connect a front end to our Sanity Studio. 
Also, this is when we have many sanity projects, this is how you can filter down to this particular one. But this is the project ID and this is where you can find it in the sanity.json. And then the production data set that we did, the default one. All right, so I'm gonna go back to schemas and remember that there's author, there's post. I'm gonna show you what these look like in the Sanity Studio. So from here, I'm going to do control tilde and this is gonna open up a terminal within my VS code. So here I'm going to run the command sanity start. So by doing that, it is going to build out all this code that we have. It's going to live at localhost 3333 and that's where we will be able to see all of our schema stuff. So let's let that build. I'm going to head back. So I'm going to open up a new tab and here I'm going to do localhost 3333 and it should be done. It looks like it is. So we would see this successfully compiled, go to, and you could click here or you could do what I just did. Now, remember, whatever you logged in when you created the project, be sure to choose the corresponding one. So because I logged in with GitHub, I'm going to click GitHub. And it's going to log me in, connecting, and there's my studio. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And here we see post, author, and category. Now let's look at our code compared to this. So post, author, category, we go here. And schemas, we have author, I mean in alphabetical order, author, category, and post. So here they match up. If we went to author, let me close this. We have name, we have slug, we have image, we have bio. If I go to author and I create a new one, we see name, slug, image, bio. So everything kind of matches up. Let's add some data into our studio. So to do so, I'm gonna click on post. So under content, click on post. And right here, this little pencil icon, create new post, click on that. And let me just zoom out just a little bit. So right now there's no preview because there's no documents to preview. I'm going to make a title, uh, first blog post. I'm going to, and you'll see, you see the preview like starting. I'm gonna generate a slug. Author, we don't have any authors over in content. So I'm going to leave that blank for now. Main image. So if you click on upload, it'll give you a little drop down. And rather than digging through my downloads, I just found it and here it is. So this is just any image from your desktop or downloads, whatever it is, but that's where I added it. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can kind of see. So we have the main image and we have the body. Let's work on the body. Um, this is my first blog post. Enjoy. And we'll do old fashioned smiley face. All right, so we can publish it or we could leave it here and go add an author so that we can input author here. So publish or not, it'll hang out for us. So I'm gonna go over here to content, open that up and click on author. No documents of this type, because we need to add someone. So let's click on that little pencil again. And we'll do, we'll do me. Generate, same thing here. We just need to upload an image. And rather than watching me go through my Files, let's just pull that up. And there's my headshot and bio. My name is Kapehe. Aloha. Cool. So I'm going to publish that. And once it's published, it's saved. Let's go back to content and click on post. First blog post, the one that we were editing earlier and click on author. And now it has me. So in real time, that was all updated and we can save that author there. Now, as we're adding stuff, all of this is instantly being synced to the cloud. So did you notice how I could leave this, go to my author, add an author, come back and it was all saved? It's because it's automatically getting synced. So if we look down here, last time we made a change was 35 seconds ago. If I add it again, changes just now because it's syncing right away. Okay, so I'm going to publish that. And if we drop this little thing down, we will see all of the changes, all the edits that have been made and when they were made. If we wanted to, let's say we added those dashes in, we see this little pencil on the side and this will show review changes. Review changes opens up this little sidebar and it will show you just who made that change. 
whether you're working in a team or by yourself, then you can revert that change if you don't want that. So I don't want that. I'm going to revert that change and it's gone. So publish it again just to make sure it's all published and up to date and we're good. Okay, so let's return to our code and kind of look what's happening behind the scenes. So here we have our project folder, blog, and within that we have a schemas folder. So like we saw in the studio, we have the author, we have category, we have post, block content, actually where our rich text fields go, and this is where we can edit our block content. We won't dive much into this, but if you do wanna find out more, definitely look at the docs. And if we go to the post.js file, like we saw in the studio, this will define the document type post. You'll see title, you'll see slug, and some of these have references, like, let me show you. Yeah, so categories, references category, which is right here. You can learn more about that in documentation as well. We won't dive much into it. Pretty much what it's doing is referencing the type category, which we have declared over here. Let's say as we're building out our blog, we want to add a description to our title. So if we go to, we'll add it to the top of this in post.js. So name will define what the name of it is. Title will be the actual title that we see in the studio. So that's where we get the capital T. Now type is string. If we wanted to add a description to that, we could description, keep titles short, add a comma, save that. So we are just adding to the title object here. Now, right away, it's saved. We should see it in the right. Of, yeah. And we see keep title short. So without doing much, we were able to customize our studio. Now we've added a description to the title. Let's add an entire new field to the fields array. So in here, right under title. So when you have a blog, sometimes you want a excerpt. So let's add one of those. It'll be a little short summary of your blog so that it can show up better on Google and like within search. So in here, I have created a object, a new object within my fields array. So I'm gonna do name and we'll do excerpt, title, capital E excerpt, and we will do um, type, we'll do string. Cool, so we're gonna save that and right away, we should see, yeah, our excerpt. So here we can say, this is my first blog post. Um, enjoy, I mean, that's what we put in our, in our text, but that's okay. And then old fashioned smiley face, of course. So I'm going to publish that. And now we have an excerpt that we added and it's kind of perfect for what we need with a blog. So yeah. So let's look at the behind the scenes raw JSON of this. If we click on these three dots up here, show menu, and we click on inspect. Here we can see the raw JSON or the parsed version of first blog post. So let's try and find our excerpt that we just added. And there it is. Okay, so this has all of our data. It has IDs, it has keys, it has text. Um, this is the text from our body. This is our excerpt. Let's actually do, um, this is my excerpt and let's save that just so we can see like a distinct difference because the text is kind of the same. And there it is, even though we had the name right here. And right away, I mean, I just changed the text. This is updated right away. It's syncing right away. So as we see, all of our data can be found here. And if we went to, I mean, this can be done for all of these. So if we go to author, click on this, the same dots, inspect, and here's all of my author info. It has my name, my slug, image, that reference to the image. So all of it can be found in this inspect tool. Now let me show you another really awesome thing. So I'm gonna go back to my post, click through here, and I can collapse these if I want them kind of hidden. And if I come down here, I'm gonna come to my main image. See this little edit button down here? If I click on that, I'm gonna get this hotspot and crop feature. So what's happening here is see these different aspect ratios, no matter what my crop is, and let me just zoom out just a little bit, just so we can see all this. I can edit and crop this. So no matter what the aspect ratio is, whether it be like a hero image or a main image, I want this hotspot to always show and I only want this part of the image to show it will 
show up accordingly. So no matter what it is, it will always show this little leaf stem that I've hot spotted on. And I can be really specific, make sure that right there. Or if I change and notice how my previews are changing as I move it, this, this leaf, I want it to always show and it will make sure that it always shows. So that's just a really cool feature on being able to handle the aspect ratio for your different images. So we've added data to our studio. We've customized it by adding a description to our title and adding an excerpt. Now let's go and deploy it. So I'm gonna go back to my code and here I'm gonna do control tilde and we still have this running. Let's just do a, the plus sign so that we can add a new terminal. And we're going to do the command sanity deploy. Hit enter. And this is going to deploy our sanity studio for us. So studio host name, we need to come up with a unique name. So I'm gonna do, I doubt blog is available. So I'm gonna do blog, blog demo two. Hit enter. Is it available? It's available. <laughs> okay, so it is available and it's just going to be building it out. And when it's all done, we will have a deployed Sanity Studio that, you, that we can visit at blogdemo2.sanity.studio. So while it builds, let's go to that URL. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. But blogdemo2.sanity.studio. Hit enter and it's still building. But it's pretty cool that just with the command Sanity Deploy, it takes care of all the deployment and I'm going to show you just how real time Sanity is. Okay, so it looks like it's done. And if we click on that, that'll take us to it, but because we've already, oh, and there it is. And it should be the exact same as all of this. Let's, let's check it out. Let's just double check. So if we click on post, first blog post is there. We have everything that we added to customize it. We have the excerpt that we added. Now, let me show you. I'm gonna pull this tab out and make this about half screen. And this one, I will do the same thing, about half screen. That's a little too big. Okay, okay. So here on the right is my deployed version. On the left is my local version. I'm going to show you as I type into my local version, how it changes on my deployed side. <laughs> So as I'm typing in, it shows up right away in real time on the deployed version. Now, same thing over here. If I went to my deployed version and I deleted, it shows up on my local side, which is amazing. So you can have this deployed, you can send this out to your team and they can be working on it, but you can see exactly what's happening and what edits are being made or what's being added on the local version. So as you customize, as you edit, as you update, it's all real time and it's awesome for team collaboration type stuff. So now that we have our Sanity Studio up and running, we have it deployed and we are checking out how awesome it is for real time. Let's actually look at how we can get this data and put it onto any front end. So I'm going to, let me come here. Let me open this back up. Now see this and I can zoom in just a little bit, but see how it says desk right here? Desk is what we're looking at right now. Vision is where we can go for a Grok playground. Now, let me tell you what Grok is. So Grok, if you go to sanity.io slash docs slash Grok, G-R-O-Q, we will see all of the information we need for Grok. There are two different ways we can query for our data in Sanity. Grok is an in-house made one. GraphQL, if you're more familiar with that, you can also use that option as well. Now, Grok, shown here, is how we're going to query for our data. Now there's different syntax and we can look at the different things we can do to filter through our data. But rather than going through all the docs together, let me just show you. That's much more fun. So let me go back and we're in vision. So in this query part, we're gonna do an asterisk to get all of it. And we're gonna open this up with square brackets and we're gonna do underscore type is equal to and we'll do author. Now I'm going to run that and it should show my author information. And sure enough, there it is. So it has Kapehe, it has a slug, which is Kapehe, and we can drop these down, but this is all of the information. Now, if we wanted to look at post, we'll put in post for type, run the query, and here's the post that we have, the first blog post, the title, everything that we need. 
let's say we just want just the title. So we're going to open that up, type in title, and run that query, and it shows up with just the title. If I wanted to add more things, I could do slug. Run that query, and everything that I put in that list, it will show up. Now, I can put this into a dot fetch or whatever it is on the front end that you need, and this query will pull out this data. So you can use all this data wherever you need. But this is the query that you would use. Another Grok playground that you can use that is not specific to a studio is grok.dev. Here we see some data over here that we can play around with, the query, and then what it would show right here. So completed, true, we'll say play that, and it will show all the titles for completed is true. If we did false here, hit play, it changes that. So using this data over here, it just allows us to kind of play around with it and see what would come out. So by using those two playgrounds, you can kind of get really familiar with Grok, or you can go back to the docs, and again, everything that you need would be in here. Now where to take it from here? So some really awesome places to go after this, which we talked about at the beginning, are the docs. Here you'll find everything you need to know about Sanity more about the studio, more about Grok, whatever it is, wherever your project takes you, definitely head to the docs. There's a lot of information here. Another awesome place, and let me show you, is the Sanity developer community. Here you can join the Slack community, and there's a lot of people willing to help if you get stuck or if you have any questions. Definitely go to the introductions channel and introduce yourself, and whatever you make with Sanity, definitely share it in the I made this channel. There's a lot of cool projects that are going on there. If you are building with Gatsby or Next, there are channels that are specific to whatever framework you need. Thank you so much for watching. We were able to get started with Sanity, mess around with the Sanity Studio, and even query for our, our data. You can find me on Twitter at Kapehe underscore OK. My DMs are open. I would love to see your Sanity project, so definitely send them my way. Again, thank you so much for watching. Mahalo, everyone.